Welcome to this episode of On Photography. We're going to do a bit of an unboxing. I got something to share with you here. So, just got this in the mail. I thought this was actually pretty interesting. And uh, trying to get it out of the box here might be a little bit difficult. It was supposed to come out this way, but... Uh... Ooh, that was a little bit of a challenge, but we got it out of the box. I think this side's kind of stuck or something, but... Anyways, we got it out of the box. Here it is. What is it you're asking? Well, you guys know I've done several videos on uh, infrared video and uh, still. So what this is, is something I've never seen before. This is actually a variable um, IR filter. So it goes all the way from 330 nanometers all the way up to about 750 nanometers, which is a nice range for dual color. Now, one of the pieces, um, I've got a number of cameras I shoot IR with. I've got this Nikon, which has been professionally modified with a 950 cut filter. So this is a very stark, pure black and white um, type of image coming out. But I also have this, the infamous uh, Sony, I forget which model, this is the CyberShot. Uh, something or another, but this is the infamous see-through closed camera that Sony sort of kind of discontinued because you can uh, put this to night mode here and what happens is it moves that uh, cut filter out of the way and through like polyesters, things like that, you can kind of see nipples or other appendages of human beings uh, uh, if you want, but <laughs> it's just kind of more humorous than it is practical. But this makes it a great IR camera because we can move that lens out of the way or that filter, that mirror filter out of the way. Uh, with that, what we can do is now, this comes in different sizes, and I'll have links to this below. And what we can do is we can simply screw this on here. It's got a 52 millimeter filter. And what I also do on this camera is I use an 8ND to kind of just knock down the light because we're taking this down. And I want to do, um, you know, color, uh, you know, flip the red and blue channels to get color infrared out of this. And so if we go ahead and power this up, you know, what we'll see here on the screen, hopefully, is not too much because um, there's not a lot of infrared light really coming through here in the shop. Uh, but it's a very nice feature because one of the things based upon the light or what you're taking an uh, in, in image of is you can adjust without changing the filter from 530 nanometers all the way up to 750. We'll do some field shots in the future because one of the things you'll notice it gets, I don't know if you can see the screen down here, it gets pretty dark at the... Um, the 750 where the 530 is actually very light so um, this is like a high red at 530 where at uh, 750 this is getting to be a deep red uh, so this is really in my book you know roughly 750 or so is where you're really starting the infrared band now what I like about this is again I can go in between and I can get infrared but yet I'm still going to retain a lot of the colors and I can actually kind of play around with this to see what's best now one of the things I found in shooting infrared is it's really sort of subject to the um, CCD in the camera. Now the Sony CCDs I think are some of the better ones for actually if you're going to shoot infrared and to do color infrared uh, I found and I don't know if it's because of the well size of the CCD or what have you but uh, I, I think this is better. I also think uh, CCD over CMOS too is, is potentially uh, a bit better so Anyways, because this is a very old camera, and this is one of the reasons I do keep it around and keep it working, um, is, again, most of the newer cameras are coming out with, you know, or have CMOS sensors because they're cheaper, more effective, you know, for regular light photography. So, anyways, I wanted to share this with you guys. I'll be doing some shoots in the future, and we'll come back to this, and I'll let you know how it progresses. But for right now, I just wanted to let you know about this because I was excited when I saw this because I've got a number, oh, i got a big collection, actually, of IR filters. And that's one of the things I hate in the field is, oh, you know, I want to change filters and the time it takes, and here I just turn this. Now... I'm sure there's going to be some purists out there that say, hey, you know, it's like a circular puller, right? you know, it's not going to be, per you're right. Um, this is, I don't feel, will be as good as a dedicated filter, just like a, you know, zoom lens isn't as good as a prime lens, etc. But for especially shooting infrared, you're going to play around a lot in Photoshop with that image, flipping colors and doing things, you know. So I think the convenience of this over the fixed filter 
is well worth it. I don't think you'll be giving up anything. Anything, I think you'll be able to catch more in the field with this than you will if you didn't have this. So anyways, hopefully you found this interesting. Link for this will be below. Give it a big thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe, and we'll see you guys in the next video. Cheers.